Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of The Blondest Podcast. I'm your host. Savannah Boda, and I'm your co-host. <laughs> Tyler Jacoby. There we go. Today, we're going to talk to you guys about how to start a business. So, first and foremost, you got to be relentless, okay? I think starting a business is not for the weak, and it is not for anyone and everyone. And it's not for people who have... Ulterior motives. Yeah. Or what? Or like friends. Yeah, I was gonna say or children. Friends, children. Or care about their mental health. Yeah. Or like yeah. like to do fun things on the weekend. Yeah. Or... So like if you like to live a very seldom boring, lonely life. <laughs> I wanna say boring. And yeah, no, it's not boring. Um, a seldom life and work around the clock and also decrease your mental health exponentially and take years off your life and possibly never find love or have children. You should open a business. <laughs> just kidding. What a good pitch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. But I would say it is a big sacrifice. And, you know, I think there's many ways to do it. We're going to talk about my way. And then we're going to talk about probably like the more realistic way. Because okay, um, yeah. I think mine, I was just like, it was like perfect timing. The stars aligned. Like I just got, I wouldn't say lucky. It was just good timing. Yeah. Good timing for sure. Because for me, when I started my business, um, I was living at home. So I didn't have any overhead which was amazing. Like I didn't have to pay rent. I didn't have to really pay for groceries. I just starved myself and ate what was in the pantry. You were 20, 21? 21, yeah. Um, didn't have to pay for literally anything other than my business. Like I already had clothing. So I just like didn't buy any new clothes. My parents weren't buying me clothes. I've, the thing about me and what always, we've talked about this a couple podcasts ago, but like, yes, I lived at home, but I basically wasn't living at home. Like I wasn't, I had to pay for my own tampons. Like I had to pay for my own toothpaste. Like I had to pay for my own like dental cleanings. Like I had my own phone plan. Like I was off payroll. I just was like allowed to live inside the home. Yeah. You know, like, like I paid for much. my own gas. Like I, I mean everything, you know, and I'm so grateful that I was able to like not have to pay rent. Like that was a huge blessing, especially in this economy. Um, so that I could focus every cent that I made back into the business. But again, like I still paid for my own shit. Yeah. So, um, anyways, that being combined with not being married, not having children and not really having friends because during this time I started my business, all of the people I was friends with were in college off in college or, you know, not the best people to be around. So when I really got serious about my business, I, you know, kind of distanced myself from people that were not going this way and were kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah. you started to realize, like, that's not who I want to surround myself with. Yeah, like, it's just not the right group of people. And I truly believe you are who your friends are. You know, you can argue all day long, but it rubs off on you. Even if you don't see it, it's so subconscious, you know? And um, your morals and values really depend on the people that you put yourself around. So yeah. be around good people and your life will improve. But so anyway, for me, let's get into it. So I never thought I'd be a business owner. Um, I talked about this on the last podcast. Like, I either thought I'd live at my parents and, like, you know, just wait for them to leave me money when they died. <laughs> and <laughs> inherit the home. Inherit the home. Like, you know, just be like, oh, Nick's my brother is doing so good. Like, we'll just leave Savannah in the house. Like, bless yeah. her soul. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, poor girl. <laughs> like, poor thing. Like, she just really, like, we will leave her the ranch in the house and she'll be all right. Yeah. Um. So that was plan one or plan two was to marry an older man. And uh, be a sugar baby or like sugar wife. Or... I don't think you could have done. I don't actually. No, I always knew I wanted to like be financially stable. No, yeah, for sure. But like, could do you think you could have stomached being with? An yeah, older there's man? lots of really good numbing drugs in the world. <laughs> so I think I would have been all right. I would have. I would have figured. I'm it asking out. because Savannah knows there's. We have one friend who's a little older who always like texts tries to set me, you up. Tries to set okay, me up. Okay, like, but like they're not that bad looking. They're not. Like, like and like she's trying to sell it like but, Highland Park money like like yeah <laughs> like like you would be set up like, yeah you'd be fine they're just looking for love and I'm like I can't there's just always like something don't be so vain there's no but there's like always like a clear egg like like but, it's not about it's, was the it the wallpaper and the shirt okay <laughs> the, um, but you could change that those are changeable things like things that are like 
I don't think Except you can change you a 50 change. year old. And if they're the rich one, then you have to be like the no, silent one. No, but you one. can be the cool one that comes in and you're like, no, baby, like this wallpaper and this shirt makes you look so hot. Like <laughs> this wallpaper makes you look hot. It's crazy. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this wallpaper gets me going. Like, I don't know. I this just, wallpaper makes me not want to fuck you. But this I wallpaper wish, makes me want to fuck you. <laughs> as much as I wish I could, I couldn't. I don't think I could. But it's a lot of people's journey. Yeah, it and is. I'm happy for them. I wish it, it could was be my me. journey. I wish it could be me. I mean, so bad. Yeah, it was for <laughs> sure my journey. So I didn't thank God because um, <laughs> I couldn't imagine like not being the breadwinner of my relationship. But you know what? Got to do what you got to fucking do. Yeah. So anywho, guys. Um, yeah, that was like my game plan. So when I started my business, like I was just like, you know, this is because I want to do it. Like I'm just interested in this. I love this. I'm passionate about it. And well, part of it was because you can't be an employee either. <laughs> Well, so like that was God as relating to last week's podcast. They're like, you are not meant to work for someone else. Well, I had really I was just thrown in such like it was so hard because like I had that experience I talked about with like the universe and God. Like I had that really powerful moment when I walked into the aesthetic school. So then when I got out of school, like it was just so hard for me and I didn't know why. Like I just kept working for like awful people or I'd work at a place that like didn't align with my ethics or they'd be like sketchy and scammy. And it was like, I just didn't think it would be like this. Like I thought it would be so much better. Like I just thought it'd be so much better. And so like, I got really sad cause I was like, I want this so bad, but like the only way I'm going to get it the way I want it to be is if I work for myself and like, I don't know if I can handle that. I don't know if I can do that. Um, but I was like, I'm just going to try. So I didn't like for sure know that I was going to go off on my own. I was working a job and I was starting to take lash clients at my parents' house. Um, Literally, like I would work a nine to five, come home and work from five till like 12 p.m. every single night. And I would just do lash. Yeah. 12 a.m. And I would just do lash clients like all night long. And I was so thankful that my parents like allowed me to do that. Granted, my mom was like kind of living part time at our ranch. Well, not our ranch, their ranch. Um, And so... Yeah, she just like didn't care. She was like, you know what, make money, whatever. So I started to save all of that money. Like I wouldn't touch it. I put it up and most of it was cash. Um, I would just save every single bit of it until I had enough to where I felt like, okay, like I think I'm comfortable now opening a place. And so even when I did put down my deposit for my salon suite, I still was working that other job and like they didn't care because it was like a very like, <laughs> like it was like a healthcare place that like had a laser that I was doing like group on laser for because like that's the only type of place that would have been okay with me opening my own business because they're like a med spa mm, mm, no it was like a healthcare place with a laser and they also did have a baby eel in the front a baby eel like yeah. in a fish tank yeah <laughs> it's pretty cool but anywho so during that time um yeah oh my god full circle moment when I was there I would do I was working with a cyton laser and I did like some um, ear veins on this girl. And I met her at the Dallas show this year. She was just like a client of mine. She's like, ever since you got rid of my ear veins at YZ Healthcare in Flower Mound, you inspired me to become an esthetician. And then she was taking my class. And it's been like six years. It's like a whole like full circle moment. That's so insane. She's like, do you remember me? And I'm like, yeah, because like I didn't know what I was doing. And I was really scared to do it. <laughs> but like places are like, here you go. Have fun. Yeah. And you're like, okay. But anyway. Yeah, that's why you got to really be careful where you go because these places will just hire the most underqualified people to run these like devices that can ruin your entire life and skin. So just be careful. Seen a lot of stuff, done a lot of stuff. Haven't hurt anyone, but very much could have. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Because some people, I mean, you cared. Oh, yeah. And I was like, and then some people don't. And it's so scary when your boss is like, figure it out, like Google it, you know, and you're like, okay or you're fired and you're like don't want to get fired so it's just and you're like forced to do something you don't feel comfortable doing it just sucks like that's the issue with this industry but anywho so I like knew you know it was smart because I was like I can work like two days like just slowly build my clientele and then like I have this backup plan like if this shit fails like I will still have this you know and so um yeah I did it and then things started to pick up and I didn't ever steal or cry this might sound really mean but they did not want anybody that was at YZ Healthcare to be my client. Like it was a uh, group on people just like trying to get the lowest price. Like it was just like, it was not the vibes, guys. It wasn't your target demographic. It wasn't my target demographic or people that I wanted to treat. And also I wasn't going to steal their clients and 
I didn't want them. So I had to like go from scratch and I like made friends with all my neighbors and I, you know, really think cross promoting yourself, especially in a salon suite is so smart because you make friends with like the spray tan girl and you make friends with the hair girl and the nail tech and like you just cross promote each other. And at that time, like aesthetics was not as popular as it is now. I was like maybe one of two in the entire salon suite and there was like a hundred plus suites. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like either a hairdresser or doing like microblading or like waxing, but no one was like doing skin. So I really put myself in a good area to where I was like the only girl. So everyone was sending me all their people and we'd do like specials with each other. Like while one friend gets like their hair blowout, the other one gets like a little facial and then they swap. And so like, I would just do like a bunch of cool promos and stuff like that, like in the salon suite. And then Instagram, like I would start posting a ton on Instagram and just, you know, trying to make educational content to educate people and slowly but surely filled my books. I started off doing like $50 facials. I did a lot of free stuff to get before and afters. And I always say this in any of the classes I teach, like before and afters are worth a thousand words. Like if you don't have them, no one's going to really want to come to you because like, how do they know to trust you? Skincare is expensive and it's also your face. It's not like they're doing your toenails, you know, yeah. like it's legit your face and it can go very south, you know? So having proof that you can walk the walk and talk the talk is going to make you stand out and make people want to come to you because they might see themselves in some of those before photos like, oh, I have same type of skin or this is also my issue. And look, she was able to do it for her. So like maybe she can do it for me. Yeah. And I think I think it's like that literally in every like what's the word I'm looking for, like industry. And it's crazy to me because I do see so many aesthetics profiles where, you know, it's all pictures of themselves or like the products they carry or stuff, but there's never before and afters. And it's like, if you're buying anything, like if you're, again, with nails, you're going to look at the person's Instagram account to see what their nails look like. Like, do they look good? For an interior designer, you're going to go on their yeah. what things and look at like, how do they design? Like, the pictures your are Your Instagram's what, your resume. Yeah, it literally is. And yeah. if you're only posting the lines you work with, like, okay, cool. Can you use them though? Like, Yeah. Do you know? And I also think too, like, it's nice to show videos of like behind the scenes of like you doing the thing in the service. So people kind of know what to expect, but also like you need to show the results that it produced. Cause like, okay, cool. You can like do it. But like, what is the result at the end of the day? So anyways, back to more business stuff. Um, I, when I started, started out with Vagaro for my booking system and I did... <laughs> old school notebook paper bookkeeping like that's how I did it I did everything on a sheet of paper and um at that time I've told this story a lot I didn't know that you had to charge sales tax and it's funny because my dad's a financial advisor but again like my parents did not want anything to do with my business because they didn't trust or believe in it and they're like we're not helping like you Figure do that over there and like Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then when I first hit six figures, six months into being a solo esthetician, that's when my dad was like, oh, fuck, we need to look at your books. And I was like, yeah, bitch, you do. Uh, yeah, like, I'm about to get arrested. And he's like, you're not charging. And he was so mean to me. And I was like, you can't be mad when you didn't help me. I'm yeah. just a girl. And I did not know. Um, but no, anyway. Like, back then, it's crazy. Like, any, because I tried to look at, like, the stuff I would do or get. But back then... You didn't even have a service menu. You didn't have anything. Because no. every time, every like payment that I gave to Savannah, it just says custom amount. So like she would take her calculator on her phone, like type out like the different things, like the products I got or like whatever. Yeah. It was just, like, I had like a so, spreadsheet in my phone of like how much everything was. Yeah. But like, like there was just no, so, like it was like. You the wild west. Uh, yeah, it was. You had no idea what you were doing. But a yeah. dream. And a passion. <laughs> and you just can go far. You don't have to have everything figured out. Like, ideally, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it's But, like, funny. I don't think... I think that's why people are hesitant because they're like, oh, my God, I have to have, like, all these ducks in a row to open a business. And I think, like, you know... And we've it, met other people who hire full consulting firms to mm -hmm. get all this stuff squared away. And, you know, that's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, you can definitely do it that way. But I also think, you know, if you learn as you go, like you can be successful. And I also think, you know, it is scary to kind of just jump into it the way I did. Like, I definitely didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, we'll figure it out. Like, it's how hard can it be? You know, like, I'm, and I didn't think it would be like a business. Like, honestly, like if you're keeping at a small scale and you're just like, you know, doing it small, like it's really 
honestly not that hard to be a solo esthetician. Um, but I would say, you know, when you get it to a bigger scale and like what we are now, like I'm constantly like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know? Um, and having to like figure things out and like hire people smarter than me, like Tyler to help me like manage some of the things that I'm just like way over my head. Like, don't know about that, babe. Like (laughs) I know what colors look good and I know how to market and I'm really fucking good at skincare, but I'll give myself more credit. I am really good at business decisions and stuff like that. But also you have to understand I didn't have anything to lose. And so, you know, I understand people getting so worked up or like not even wanting to take that jump and that leap into starting a business because they're like, I need to have, you know, a CPA. I need to have an employment employment handbook. Like I need to have all these things before I can open. And maybe it's because you're a little bit older and like you have a family or you have a home you have to pay for or you have children or a husband or other people that you have to think about. At that time, it was literally me, myself and I. And I just like had no fear. I was honestly fearless. And I think ignorant too. I was very ignorant on how much it took to really maintain a business, but I was driven. And so that ignorance, you know, kind of pushed me into a place where I had to be forced to be great. And I truly believe that, you know, if I had known how much work would go into it, I don't know if I would have ever started, but I think, you know, I just knew I wanted to do skin and I didn't want to work for awful human beings. And I wanted to do things like my way. And I wanted to use the products I wanted to use and not be told that I can't use certain lines. And I just wanted to make a difference and make a change. And I think when you start a business and you have a clear mission of helping others or whatever it is, whatever your mission is, you have to have one. And for me, it was ethical and results-driven skincare. Like since I was 21, that has been it. And I know people have copied that and it's in everyone's Instagram bio now, but that was my mission statement that I started. It, <laughs> and it is a good one. So I don't blame <laughs> you guys. Like it is slay. But um, yeah, like that's everything I always bring back to. Like whenever I'm making a business decision, is it ethical and is it results driven? Because there's a lot of things that you're going to want to bring into your business that may not align with what you are. You might get shiny object syndrome and be at these trade shows. And trust me, I did that a lot in the beginning. And I made so many bad investments because I was so like wanting everything. I'm like, oh my God, like a rose gold jelly mask. Like bitch, what? (laughs) <laughs> no is that ethical probably is it results driven no absolutely not so yeah decisions like that had to be made and I think niching down when you're starting a business too like you don't want to be for everybody or you'll be for nobody so you don't want to be the cheesecake factory of aesthetics I say that all the freaking time like find what you're good at and be a specialist and people will come to you there's so many estheticians that refer their clients to me that live locally around me because they don't do acne they do different kinds of things and different kinds of treatments and I don't do fluffy facials even though and I want to say and Savannah Boda said this okay are you ready I think whether you're results driven medical spa or a fluffy relaxing spa we are doing something so important to empower women and men and whoever wants to walk into the door And I hate when people are like, oh, like, well, that doesn't get results. Okay, sometimes skincare and service-based industry is not just about the result on the outside. It might be the result on the inside. If someone went through a divorce, lost their child, their husband, just that power of touch and that moment for them to relax and be in the moment and just feel good about themselves is self-care. It is results from the inside. So I definitely think there's a place for all different types of estheticians, whether it's a day spa or a med spa, or you're doing more relaxing facials versus doing microneedling lasers and chemical peels. Like at the end of the day, what we're doing is empowering people that walk in our door to feel good, whether we're doing it on the outside or making them feel good on the inside. And I think that's so beautiful and so powerful. So that's what I think. Slime. Yeah. Where was I before I went on that tangent? I was saying something good. I don't remember. I just got so encapsulated in the feels. Thank you. Of what you were saying. Because I know, like, I think I've been a bit pretentious, I'll be honest, in the past about like, oh, like, I only want to do things that are results driven. And like, I think I've made some estheticians feel bad about not being in the more medical space. But I just want to clear the air that like, I don't feel that way. Honestly, Younger I have me, respect for them because I would have carpal tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> like. Low key, like, I wish I could still do that, but my hands would fall off. Yeah. But um, no, I just... You were talking about niching down. Yeah, niching down. Exactly. Um, Sorry, it took me a second to get yes. back to where you were. And I love a good facial. So anyways, yes, that's what I was saying. People... I will refer out to estheticians that do that kind of service because my clients are like, I just want to like, I want to feel good. I want to get in a robe. I want like steamer. I want spa lights. And I'm like, 
that's not here, but I know someone for you, you it know? It used to be like that. Yeah, but the thing is, um, for me, I, you know, really wanted to focus on results. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, you can't, you can marry the two. And I've seen a lot of people do it successfully. And that's what I did. So I started off more relaxation. Then I went like kind of med spa, day spa hybrid. Um, but I started to blow up and people wanted my services. And I was turning away so many people. And I, you know, talked to my clients. I'm like, would you be okay with shorter service times and being able to like get your peel and get out? And I'd be able to get you in. And they're like, yeah, like I just want what's going to move the needle. I don't need all of that. And yeah. honestly, in a fast paced society too, I have a lot of clients, they don't want to be in a room for an hour. They just want to get in, get what they're supposed to get done and go. They don't need to be rubbed. They don't want to take their clothes off. Like they just want to come get the treatment and get out. And other people want something different. So that's why it's so great that there's a million med spas because you can find what fits you and what fits what you want. Yeah. Um, I think in the new spa though, for sure, I'm going to incorporate some of that feely touch back in, um, but also make it optional for those clients that like that quicker service and want to get in and get what they need to get done and get out. And I'm like that too. Like I, like, while it feels good, like, I mean, I've had times where I'm getting my hair done and I'm like, bitch, just shampoo it. Like, I don't like, I want to go, yeah. especially like at a hair salon when you've been there for fucking like Four three hours. hours and you're like, I just wash my hair, like, please just blow it out. And like, I just want to go, you know? So, I mean, I get antsy with my nails too. Like, I'm like, I don't want to be somewhere for a very long time, a very anxious person. So I like to cater to everyone, um, you know, that might feel that way as well. But yeah, we still make sure it's meaningful and impactful. I mean, 30 minutes is a long time to be with somebody, but I do think, you know, it can be something that people want a little bit more fluff added in and some people don't. So I think it's just really based on your clientele. And I personally miss the fluff because I feel like it's just not only beneficial for them, but for me, like, I feel like I'm able to like, kind of like just relax during the stressful day. And like, I'm actually really good with my hands. I'm very good massager. I used to massage my poppy's it. feet when I was little. And you know what's a funny story? What? Like I, for Christmas, asked for spa CDs for like spa music. Because I would like just play spa music like in my room all the time. Like, you know, I love Inya. But like I'm talking <laughs> like spa music, spa music, like ocean waves How and like birds. Age? I don't know. You'd have to ask my mom like six or seven. Oh my goodness. And I would like set things up and like massage like my whole family when they'd come over for Christmas and stuff. I need to have a kid like that. I loved it. I bet they loved it. No, oh, I loved playing spa. And like, no, but I, I'm saying I bet they fucking oh, loved yeah. that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like, I went through that phase, and then I got into makeup. So it started off with me, like, wanting to be a masseuse. And then, like, of course, like, my dad was like, fuck no. Like, you need to go to college. You're not going <laughs> to rub people for a living. And uh, then I got into makeup, and he's like, you're also not doing that. And I was like, okay. And then I went to nursing school and then I got into aesthetics. So I kind of like, you know, I went from like masseuse to makeup artist to esthetician. And that's pretty slay if you ask me. Yeah. And I think I'm glad you didn't do makeup. Yeah. Do you feel like makeup's a dying industry? I think people are getting too good at doing it on them, their own. But I think people are also lazy and want to get it done. Yeah. I don't think it's a dying industry. I think the lash industry, unfortunately and sadly, is a dying industry. Because it's so much upkeep, so much time, and it's expensive. And it's not good for your lashes. It depends. Uh, I'm, I'm not Don't educated. Make that claim. Well, I'm not educated <laughs> yeah. enough to like say yes or no because I think everyone's different. I think it comes down to the technique and the products that are being used. I think and probably like the how the people treat the lashes. Yeah, I think too. there's a lot of things that go into that, but I do think people are going towards more natural because um, I think we went through this whole like big booty, like big lashes, like big tits. No, I don't think tits have ever been in or out but really no i think tits are tits you know but definitely like bigger booty was a thing and like more curvy voluptuous and then like big lashes and then just like i think a little bit you know more like Full bleach cake. blonde hair well yeah like i think like that i think we're kind of getting back to like what's in style right now is like just like more natural but i do think like that's so subjective and like some people you know, like what they like and don't like what they don't like. Like, I'm yeah. not going to change my body or change what I like because of what's in style or not in style. But I do think what it's coming down to, not only are people wanting to be more natural, but I think really the biggest thing is it's just a lot of time out of your day to go get your lashes filled. You have to do it so often and it is expensive, yeah. you know, which it should be because it is a lot of freaking work. Like for, I mean, I did lashes for a really long time mm -hmm. and yeah, it's a lot of work. Is it stressful? No, it's fun. Okay. But like, I think, you know, that you get to a point where you get burnout because it's just like the same thing and it's very tedious. And 
Um, it takes a lot of time and it hurts your back. I feel like I, I have two shaky hands to be doing all that. I think once you like do it enough, like you get better with it. But yeah, I mean, I just, I do worry about that. I do. Cause I feel like it is kind of on the out skirts. And I think microblading is a little bit too. And permanent makeup a little bit. Small. I mean, that's like, that's scary to me. Like, it's just like, there such are a some really good people because and that use really good pigment. I think it's just scary because. Well, I'm just talking about the commitment to it because, like, well, eyebrow it's not trends, really forever. Yeah, but I feel like it's kind of like filler when they're like, it'll dissolve on its own in three to five years. And it's like, no, it's it's still there a little after that. You know what I mean? That's like also controversial. What? I'm just con- full of controversy today. But some people say there's no way. Some people say there isn't. But there's no, like, f- you know. But I feel like like even people we know have, like, said that, like, when they went. Yeah. Like, they thought it should have been gone by then. And it. I think some people metabolize filler different, though. So I don't think it's true for, like, every single person. Yeah. I think some people just metabolize it differently. Because there are definitely people where it just goes and it's gone. Because, like, that's why I get nervous, like. Like, I was literally, so luckily, because Savannah's my best friend, I was asked to get jawline filler, and, like, I wouldn't have had to pay for it, and I was too afraid to do it, because I'm like, what if it looks horrible, and then I have it for, like, 10 years, mm. and I've seen Savannah get dissolved before, and she is crying real tears, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to do that, <laughs> but um, back to business. Back to business. Um, so we got we covered niche down. Yeah, niche down and really make sure that you are a specialist in investing in your education. I think people mess, put a lot of money into like marketing dollars and boosting ads and all of those things. But like at the end of the day, it's your skill set that's going to make you get those clients and keep those clients. It's not about just getting clients. It's about keeping them and keeping them happy. So you got to really focus on that internal part of your business and stop focusing on the external so I think really just putting client priority first, getting those internal referrals and repeat clients is super yeah. important. Referrals are everything in because, you know, yeah. if you like somebody, then you're going to like who they bring in most likely. So that's what I would have to say is definitely like focus on really in the beginning too, like keeping those clients coming back and not trying to cast a net so wide to grab every single person on the street, but to build that community within your clientele. Yeah. And like... We're going to do another episode on expansion, so we won't talk about hiring yet? Mm-mm. Okay. But yeah, I think just maintaining, you want to get, I mean, the key is to be, you know, someone that is trustworthy and good at their job and reliable and be there for your clients and make them feel seen and heard and safe. Um, but yeah, I think with starting a business, like I was saying earlier, there's two different ways you can do it. You can do it on a hope and a dream and $50 like I did. Or you can, you know, get a loan. And I've seen a lot of people be successful with this and I'm not opposed to it. Would I personally, honestly ever do it? Absolutely not because I was scared to have a credit card until like two years ago. Like, cause I don't want to spend money unless it's like I have it, you know, loans scare me. Of course I've had to do. Some- I used to get so mad at Savannah about the credit card thing. Yeah, I just She'd wouldn't like, do it. You're throwing away free money. And I wouldn't do it. <laughs> she would not do it Mm-mm. until she got married to Lance. Yeah, and I was like, well, if you pay it, then, like, that's fine. Yeah. And not, like, his money. It's my money. But, like, if you, like, pay the bill. You yeah. Know? Or it's our money now that we're married. But at the time before we were married. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I would say definitely, you know, if you want to get, like, investors and things like that, like, you can totally do that. Business consultants, all those things. It's just a lot of overhead. I think I was able to scale my business so fast because it was me and myself and I didn't have anyone to pay. I wasn't paying myself. There was, like, nothing to pay for but pocket all of the money I was making back into the business. And that's so important, too, is reinvesting. So, like, I had a list of, like, things I wanted to get. When I make this much money and have this much saved, I'm going to get a hydrofacial machine. When I have this much saved, I'm going to get a new storefront. When I have this much saved, I'm going to get a TV. When I have this much saved, I'm going to bring on the skin pen. When I have this much saved, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. So I always had goals of what I wanted to reinvest in. And instead of spending it on frivolous things, I was always going back to my business, Always, every single thing before I ever bought myself my first purse. Like I always put everything back into the business to grow it and scale it. So I think that helps when you don't have a bunch of people to pay, you don't have a bunch of overhead and you're able to really just reinvest back into your business as you go and as you grow. And like, and 
also being extremely careful what you spend your money on and knowing what you need to and what you don't need to because like you said not having overhead for the first what you should be able to make money with your hands if you are a good esthetician you should be okay with making money with just using your hands and that's what i did i had no machines i maybe had a microderm machine you didn't even have retail Mm -mm. so like the first two months i think that i was seeing you you didn't have retail yeah and then like you had like five products that you picked to start mm-hmm. carrying. Like you've slowly started carrying products at your spa yeah. and like you had what, like you would make an order of eight of each mm-hmm. or something like you grew, you never jumped the gun. You never spent more than you should have. You I did. Were, what do you mean? I definitely like got a bunch of back bar that like I didn't need. Oh, and like bar. I would go to like yeah. s- shows and like buy a bunch of shit that I thought was cool. And then like it would just sit and so I definitely did. I feel like you used it though. Like not at first all at least. Of it. No, definitely not all. I made of it. some bad investments for sure. But you know, I think that's part of business. But that's trial I and think error. yeah, you have to you have to see what fits and what sticks and what doesn't. But I think, you know, on a smaller scale, like I wasn't losing like the forty thousand dollars that we talked about yeah. last episode, but um, you know, to me it was forty thousand yeah. dollars at the time because I was not making great money, but yeah, I definitely think it's super, super important to just make sure that you are being smart about what you're spending your money on and just always putting that back into the business, especially in the beginning and really focusing on growth and what you're going to do next and having a game plan. I think, you know, planning is very important when it comes to business. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah. I think my mascara is here. She's the pro. Love you guys. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. See y'all next week.